You're sifting through your hierarchy, activating and deactivating game objects. To do this, you need to select an object, shift over to the inspector window, and then hit the activation toggle. Or do you? This is a viewer requested video that I had some time this week to work on between blowing up zombie heads. Now I recently made a video on removing the boring box from the hierarchy view and giving it more context by adding an icon from the top component of the game object. You'll find that video linked in the description. Now someone asked me if you could move the activation toggle from the inspector to the hierarchy view. And here we are making this video. Let's spit this out into a clean class to start with and then at the end I will point out where you can insert it into the code from the previous video. So. We create a static class called hierarchy activation display. We'll chuck the initialize and load attribute onto it and we'll create a static constructor, which will be called because of that initialize and load attribute. In here, we'll add a method hierarchy window item on GUI from the editor application class. This is used when Unity draws each element in the hierarchy. Okay, so here we want to get the game object, which we can from the instance ID and the helper method instance ID to object from the editor utility class. And here comes the fun bit. We're going to add a toggle, but we need to know where to add it. So we take the selection rectangle this method gives us, this begins where the object in the hierarchy begins, and we are sticking our toggle just before it. So we'll move it horizontally by 27. Why 27? Well, because it works. Now, if we left it here, the toggle's width would be the selection rectangle, which would mess us up because we're trying to select the object and not the toggle or trying to select the toggle. Anyway, when we're selecting this, we want to restrict the toggle's width to 13 because it's not really an unlucky number. It's the width of this toggle. Now, we draw the toggle within its new rectangle and we give it the value of the active state of the game object. Now, obviously, we want to take the result and compare it to see if we have pressed it, changing the active state. If it's changed, let's set the new active state of the object right here. Done, right? Well, no. We still need to make sure that we mark the scene as dirty, because if we don't, the editor doesn't know we've actually made this change. So we mark it as dirty. And we will also record the state of the object in the undo queue because for the most part, we are not evil developers, maybe just forgetful sometimes to add things into the undo queue. Great. Now, as you can see, it all works in this police station asset with this monster from Protofactor, which happens to be right on sale at the moment in the store. Link in the description if you want to pick them up. Now, looking at the previous script on the hierarchy icon display, I would add this as a method called something like draw activation toggle, and I would call it in the script right here. Now you might want to consider also changing the class name to something like hierarchy advanced display, as now it doesn't just deal with icons anymore. Okay, that's everything. You can either go back and add it into the previous script or have it as its own script. And I will go back to shooting zombies, which will leave you to watch the video on screen now, which will lead to more questions, which will lead to more videos. <laughs>